In this video, we're going to discuss how to isolate engine cooling system problems between the thermostat and the temperature sensor on a 2017 Suburban. Of course, there are many other cooling system failure modes than just the temperature sensor or the thermostat. For example, there could be a coolant leak, the coolant system could be clogged, the coolant reservoir could be low or empty of coolant, etc. We are only addressing the two most common failures in this video. Repair should only be performed by trained service personnel. This is the engine coolant temperature sensor. The temperature sensor monitors the temperature of the coolant. This is the engine coolant thermostat. The thermostat regulates coolant flow through the engine in order to maintain optimum engine temperature. First, an explanation of what happens if the thermostat or temperature sensor fails. If the thermostat is stuck closed, the vehicle will likely overheat. If the thermostat is stuck open, the engine temperature will not get to the optimum 210 degrees. While this is much better than an overheating situation, you still want an engine to operate within its designed operating limits. In the case of this 2017 Suburban, that would be around 195 degrees to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, or roughly between these two segments on the temperature gauge. If the temperature sensor fails, the temperature gauge will produce an inaccurate reading usually minimum or maximum temperature. The engine control module, also called the ECM, will detect a fault, but the engine temperature will continue to be properly maintained by the working thermostat. Now we'll provide a brief description of how the engine cooling system is monitored. The thermostat is a mechanical component that has no sensors or other feedback mechanisms for the ECM to monitor. So the ECM monitors the temperature sensor in an effort to detect engine cooling system problems. The most obvious identifiable fault would be an over temperature indication. However, the engine control module or ECM also looks at under temperature as a potential cooling system problem. Since engine overheating is one of the more serious outcomes of a cooling system fault, the ECM will take measures to avoid engine overheating. It does this by operating the two radiator electric fan motors at full speed and it doesn't stop them until the engine has been turned off for five minutes. This confuses a lot of people into thinking that they have an electrical problem where the running fans will drain their battery. Here you can see the fan running at full speed and the engine is running. Here you can see the engine being turned off and after 5 minutes the two electric fan motors turn off. The ECM also stops reporting engine temperature and it maintains a minimum reading on the temperature gauge. This confuses a lot of people into thinking that they have a bad temperature sensor because the reading on the temperature gauge will never change again until the ECM fault has been reset. Now that we've explained the basics, we're going to talk about how to tell which component needs to be replaced. The temperature sensor is a thermistor. The resistance of the component will vary with temperature. You can use an ohm meter to see if it is shorted or open. At 78 degrees Fahrenheit, this temperature sensor has a reading of around 2.3 kilo ohms. You can see that the resistance goes up when the sensor is cooled down with a piece of ice. And you can see that the resistance goes down when the sensor is heated up with hot water. If you don't have a multimeter handy, or you don't want to bother with the resistance test, you can always use the clues provided by the vehicle temperature gauge. For example, if you witness the gauge increasing in temperature from a cold start, or maybe even a temperature somewhere between the 160 degree minimum and the 260 degree maximum readings of the temperature gauge, 
then this may be a clue that the temperature sensor isn't bad. If you're not certain what the temperature gauge was reading prior to the ECM fault detection, you can disconnect the negative battery cable for a few minutes to reset the ECM fault and then watch the temperature gauge while the vehicle is running. With the engine cooled down, you want to look for an increase of the temperature gauge from the minimum 160 degree reading. Another clue that will rule out the temperature sensor and point to a bad thermostat is if the fault is triggered when cabin heating is turned on, especially to the full heat setting. This is because an open thermostat will cause the engine temperature to be low, and when the cabin heat is turned on, the engine temperature drops further. The ECM is looking to see a temperature increase, not a decrease, so it creates a cooling fault where the electric cooling fans get turned on at high speed and the temperature gauge goes to a minimum 160 degree reading until the ECM fault is reset or cleared. It's not enough to replace the faulty thermostat or faulty temperature sensor. The ECM fault has to be cleared as well. In other words, these behaviors, the high-speed electric cooling fan operation and the minimum temperature gauge reading, will all continue until the ECM fault has been reset or cleared. As discussed previously, the ECM fault is most easily cleared by disconnecting the negative battery terminal. Once you have determined which component you want to replace, you can go to our channel and view the appropriate repair video. See the links in the description. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe.